Hello and welcome to the very last part of the Blind Eye tutorial. Three months almost in the making <laughs> because I am a terrible procrastinator. So, last week, actually, this one's on time. Last week, we left off on this merge node here. This is going to be the quick overview of what we're doing. And it looks more complicated than it actually is. So, today, we are going to add in the eye reflections add in our eyelid mask, then we are going to darken the edges of the eye, because if you look at a real eye, it gets darker toward the edges, and then we are going to apply a final grade to the image. It's just very simple. Oh, let's get started. Okay, the first thing that I realized when I opened up this composition from last week was that the noise in the eye was way, way too powerful and was not blurred at all. So I'm going to add in a blur node. A blur of one is fine there. I'm also going to turn down the blend here to 0.25 instead of 0.5. Okay. And also just move that over somewhere. <laughs> somewhere it looks better. Let me rotate it. Okay. So then we are going to add in another merge. This merge is going to become our eye reflections. Now adding the eye reflections is actually very, very simple. We need a color corrector. Hold shift, drag it away from shift and shake it, drag it away from that. Plug it in there, then we are going to jack up the contrast all the way. Mm, beautiful. Then we're going to plug it into the foreground of this merge and change the merge to screen. We're also going to plug that merge into our mask. Hold Alt, add in a little nubbin, and boom, we have our eye reflections. And I'm going to turn this contrast down. because you want to have it as low as it can go. And if you have darker eyes, it might be easier. But that is basically our eye reflections. So now we move on to our eyelid mask. And that's going to be another merge node. Surprise, surprise. There are a lot of merge nodes when you're working with a node-based compositor. The foreground is going to be our regular footage again, but this time we're going to add in a polygon mask. The first thing we're going to do with this polygon mask is right click the center, connect it to the left eye path position, and then I'm going to draw in my path, but I want to view the unedited footage so I can more easily see it. I'm going to use four points some people use three, but you really don't want to have a lot of points because you will have to roto this to get it perfect. It's a pain, but I mean, you have to do it. And, and that looks pretty good to me. So now let's take a look. And it's inverted, so easy fix. Invert that mask. And then add in a bit of soft edges. Also, you can turn down the border width if you want to. Bring this in until it looks right. Okay, that looks good. And it should move with your eye pretty well now. You will have to adjust it whenever you move your eyelid, but for this video, that's good enough. Now we need another one for the other eye. So I'm going to Control C, Control V, but I'm going to disconnect it from that track by just hitting remove and connect it to the right eye path position. And I'm just going to adjust these points and I'm going to turn off invert and change this to subtract. So that there we go. We have our eye masks. Masks. Uh, it looks like it's being cut off though. That's weird. All right. So, 
now we have our eye masks. And if your character does actually blink after the effect is created, you just have to move that mask over it and then back up with the eyelid. So there we go. Now I'm going to add in a color corrector. And because I noticed earlier that my eyes don't exactly line up with the effect, it's not a big deal, but we can still fix it right quick. I'm going to come over here, add in a transform. This will be our offset transform for the right eye. Move it over slightly and add in another one for the right eye. Okay, then we're going to select all of these nodes and hit Control C because we're going to need those in, for the next part of this video. Okay, and with our nodes copied, I'm going to hit Control Shift V over here. Where did they go? Uh, I guess the nodes are still being read as being in there. Did it glitch out? Yep, still, this says the nodes are in there. Huh. Let me try closing and reopening this file one sec. Okay, and I'm back. That did not fix it. So, easy solution. All right, click find ungroup there we go and then hit control G to regroup them boom fixed okay so now that that minor crisis has been averted we're gonna move back over here I'm also going to copy our original mask hit control V over here plug these into it because this will make the edges of our eyes darker I'm gonna plug that mask into this color corrector because it should be exactly the same as our other two masks, but we don't want them to be solid. So I'm going to uncheck solid, turn up the border width, and then turn on these soft edges so that I have two rings. And these rings will have to be made smaller. And just so I can see them better, I'm gonna turn down the gain all the way. Or not the gain, let's see turn up the brightness a bit just so I can see where it starts and ends then adjust them to the right size alright bring the brightness back and I can actually just turn down the gain to get the dark edge effect like that so before and after and you can tweak that so that it works for you okay and we're getting there but you know I don't really like the color of our eyes so I'm going to make them a bit blue by selecting the color corrector we added just after we added in the noise making it a bit more blue tinted there we go all right. Oh, yeah, and I forgot to mention, when we hit Control-Shift-V to add in these nodes, that made these instances, and you can tell by these green boxes. So any values you change here will change in the parent instance, which would be over here. And any changes you make here will change over here. That's what instances do, and because these two should always be exactly the same, they work really well for that. All right, and coming up on the end of this tutorial, we need to add in our final color corrector for our final grade, because those eyes are looking pretty sweet there. But actually, before I add in the final grade, I forgot one thing. I forgot that this eye mask needs to go after this color corrector. So I'm gonna shift click, drag, and then plug that back in 
move this back over. Hold Alt and create a nub. Okay, there we go. Now the eyelids will block out our darkness. Unfortunately, the darkness shows over our go away, our eyelids. So we're going to need to edit that. The effect stops transitioning at frame 30. Not frame 30, frame 100. So at frame 100, we're going to come over to our ellipse mask. Hit right click animate, right click animate. Come back over to frame 20, which is where it starts. And turn them down to zero so that now we have this. But you know, we want them to be dark right after it starts. So we're on frame 30. So let's go over to our timeline and just move this last keyframe, just the last keyframe, over to frame 30. So that now we have that. There's another one hiding in there, the border width, so that now it darkens by frame 30. And you can tweak that to match your footage better. But now on to the final grade. So I'm going to turn up the gain a bit. I should probably view that, that helped. I'm going to turn up the gain just a bit and the contrast. Add a bit of lift and come over here to shadows, lit, and darken them just slightly so that it really highlights the face just because of the lighting in the scene. So, before, after. Just a very basic grade to make everything look a bit better. And if I was really wanting to make it look good, I could mask out parts of the face and blur them so that I get rid of any blemishes and weird discoloration like around my lips and stuff but not gonna do that in this tutorial so that is how you create the blind eye effect from Game of Thrones entirely in fusion now I gotta say I would recommend making a better base go away um, in Photoshop or GIMP rather than doing this weird node setup to get that image <laughs> Just make like a cool circular image that's veiny like that. It'd probably be easier in GIMP, but you can do it all in Fusion if you want to, and it'd probably be faster if it was a big comp to do it in Fusion if you had to go back and change things constantly. And take all of these values and all of these buttons with a grain of salt because they may not work for your footage, and you have to add them in so that they work for your footage. Having all that in mind, thank you all for watching. Please subscribe. Blah, 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 blah. Please consider subscribing, and until next time, go make something awesome. I'll see you then.